RX 550, one of the weakest Polaris based GPUs is now half a decade old at this point. Originally, this card was meant to be used for lightweight gaming, and mostly esports titles. But what about the latest and greatest titles of recent times? Can the RX 550 surprise us a bit even in some of the most demanding titles? Well, there is only one way to find that out. One of the most popular titles of recent times certainly is Elden Ring. Regardless of its very decent graphics quality, the RX 550 handles the game pretty nicely. Of course, on the most reduced settings the game allows, but with a 900p resolution. This means that you still have some room to mess around, if you don't like playing on the edge of 30fps most of the time. Far Cry 6, on the other hand, needs quite some tweaking in order to get fluid frame rate. For the game to run nicely, not only do you need to turn down all of the settings as well as resolution, you also need to set the FSR mode to the quality preset, giving you in return a nice average of 50 FPS. Regardless of the very reduced settings, in my opinion, the game looks decent enough, and I could play it this way without a problem. Days Gone delivered quite surprising results, not only in terms of FPS, but also in terms of the settings used, so at 1080p you can expect the game to deliver frame rates above 30 most of the time. And of course, if you would like a more fluent experience, 720p would get you closer to 60 FPS. The game also looks decent with full HD resolution and I honestly did not expect it to run this well, seems like a very nicely optimized title. Halo Infinite provides a lot of trouble to other graphics cards that don't really support the full feature set of DirectX 12 API, but not with the RX 550. Although quite reduced settings are needed, the game runs good enough, with a stable frame rate that never really goes under 30, but never really gets beyond 40 FPS. The remastered version of GTA San Andreas runs smoothly even on 1080p resolution, but as we are used to it by now, most of the settings are turned all the way down. The game is perfectly enjoyable with these settings, giving in return a nice average of 40 FPS, and regardless of the very reduced settings, the game doesn't look that bad. Similar to Far Cry 6, Battle 4 also requires the quality preset on the FSR mode in order to be running good enough. Unlike Far Cry 6, the game runs fine and even the visual quality isn't that bad considering that the FSR mode essentially lets you play the game at half the resolution you selected, so the game is basically running at 540p. To finish off the benchmark list we have the latest installment in the Resident Evil series, running in 900p with of course all of the settings turned all the way down. This game offers quite some tweaking in terms of the settings, so maybe a few settings can be turned up. This was the quickest way to find playable settings with a really stable frame rate reflected by the percentile figures. Seems like the RX 550 still has some power left in it to run even the most demanding titles of recent times, but of course, features like AMD's FSR can help quite a bit, essentially turning titles from unplayable into an almost 60 FPS experience. Generally speaking, the card seems like a replacement to the once budget king GTX 750 Ti, offering quite similar performance but with more complete API support and of course a bit of a longer lifespan as it is 2 years younger than the 750 Ti. So if you're after a card that runs esports games really well and can run even some of the latest titles, then the RX 550 is perfect for you, but of course, if you can find it at a reasonable price. Personally, I wouldn't spend more than $50-$60 on a card like the RX 550, 